Radu has uh, over 24 years IT experience, and he has worked for Microsoft Services, Microsoft Technology Center, and most recently, the Microsoft Canada Specialist Team Unit. So specialist in the governance, uh, the privacy risk management. And Radu has expertise in enterprise content management, cloud computing, and team collaboration. He has worked with all the major Canadian banks and a few large downtown Toronto law firms to help develop a robust collaboration and a person, uh, personal productivity offers while maintaining privacy and protecting sensitive information. And Radu's topic is compliance and risk management recommended practices for data governance and privacy. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Radu and uh, today I'm going to cover a topic that um, is was quite complex. So what I will attempt to do is hit on all of the high level points. Um, and from there, you can get an idea uh, about data uh, governance and uh, the processes, uh, the procedures, the people, um, everything that uh, typically organizations go through when they look at uh, all that data governance. So the five major categories here, um, I'll go through them uh, uh, um, uh, quickly and highlight a few of the points. Um, what is data governance and why do we need it? Which is probably a question that everyone here has answered in the past. Um, if it's not for the various uh, news articles that we see around companies uh, being breached and a lot of uh, um, customer data being leaked and then uh, litigation cases being raised around that, um, you know, there's some other reason why uh, you've all heard of, of uh, data governance and how important it is. Really, the, um, uh, from a definition perspective, if I were to look at the most comprehensive one, I would say the Mike Ferguson one. At the bottom there uh, is really a, the orchestration of people, processes, policies, and technology. So exactly what Rob has talked about as well, that when you apply it to the data side, is really there to help you protect both structured and unstructured data um, and guarantee commonly understood and trusted uh, company understood, trusted, and secure uh, data throughout the enterprise. So that's what the data governance is. Now, why do we need data governance? And again, outside of the business impact of ungoverned data, uh, where data leaks can occur either by um, an internal bad actor, uh, like an employee who's trying to extract the information, provide it to competitors, or maybe take it with him or her um, to the uh, next competitor that they have a job with. Uh, is really there and it's becoming more and more important because of this concept of digital transformation. I and mean, we've all heard about it as uh, one of the most recent industrial uh, transformations uh, in the world. Uh, and with COVID-19 and the pandemic, pandemic has been accelerated even more. Think about all of your jobs and how they've changed over the past year and a half uh, and how much data is also generated based on the fact that we now have access to more resources than we used to have 20 years ago, right? 20 years ago, um, you would spend an arm and a leg on um, on a one gig hard drive. Today, I, I don't think you can get one gig hard drives anymore, it, it, thumb drives and things like that. Um, the, the fact that you can uh, get um, unlimited almost amount of storage from a subscription in a cloud service, whether it's Microsoft, Google, Amazon, whatever the the, the cloud provider is, it's, 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 it's irre irrelevant, but it does um, contribute to the reason why data governance is important. And then um, above and beyond that, and I know um, the, the word Azure is on the slide here, but when you look at where this data estate or digital estate uh, now resides, we all have smartphones, tablets, devices that um, are personal and we access uh, work data or our work generated or uh, uh, provisioned or uh, uh, provided uh, and we take those home with us. So all of a sudden now we're going above and beyond just our immediate infrastructure that we need to manage from a data governance perspective within the uh, the boundaries or the walls of our data centers. We also expand out to um, what we call the hybrid mode, uh, um, hybrid uh, environment, which is 
the data centers on premises and the cloud services, again, for from whatever cloud vendor um, is, is selected. And then um, integration between those two by also adding these uh, the, these edge devices and the edge devices and the data could be, uh, like I said, a smartphone, tablet, um, a, a personal computer, but we also see extension of that into Internet of Things or IoT, right? When you look at the manufacturing industry and some of the, um, uh, some of the innovation that's happened there around uh, preventive maintenance by receiving information from sensors of equipment that a company has sold, a manufacturing company has sold to, uh, to uh, their customers. How do we manage all of that data and again, ensure that it's um, uh, secured, it's accurate, it provides the right information to, uh, uh, to the organization and provides better uh, customer um, uh, service. Um, and this slide basically just reiterates the, the same concept as the multiple clouds in the data center. So this concept of, of hybrid, but it also adds the fact that there's, in addition to the data that's being generated, there's also operational transactional processing systems, as well as analytical systems that sit both in uh, cloud as well as on premises. And uh, most often you'll see a cross between the two. And what I mean by a cross is basically going through that middle line that uh, is typically firewalls uh, or uh, a DMZ that separates out the data center from the multiple uh, uh, clouds. Now, when digital transformation um, uh, started and it, it was really it was prompted more around the, all of the cloud services and the digital enablement of any process or system that existed within organizations. There's also uh, this concept of um, uh, structured versus unstructured data. So when you look at the, um, uh, the, the traditional structured data, that's like a transactional data, master data, uh, and you typically use this if you look on the, in the column on the right hand side, uh, and things like uh, employee data, returns, payment, payments, orders, things like that in the system. Machine generated data all of a sudden now um, also um, is one of the categories because we're now talking about any kind of um, IDR log. So any of the um, uh, interactive voice response systems that you get when you call in and all of that data being collected and analyzed. Uh, by by systems, human generated data, uh, anything from email, documents, news feeds, any social network data that's um, uh, set up uh, in voice interaction data, that's part of the unstructured text or sentiment analysis. And then the external data, anything that you take in as a feed that augments your existing systems and helps you deliver um, all of the services to your employees in your business. Now, if you take an ungoverned data flow, and we'll take the example of, um, uh, of a marketing application, let's say, uh, we're looking at the various systems and solutions that you have um, and applications that you have in the environment, and you need to rely on each other for providing information and marketing information to, to your employees. When you look at something that's not properly governed from a data collection perspective, it becomes quite a mess. And it, it is a big um, challenge to respond to any kind of flow of transactions between these systems. So it looks something to, uh, 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 to that effect. When you're going now into um, uh, and looking at the increasing number of marketing applications that data that exists within, and you start building out the data structure where you group all of the various um, uh, systems and what they're uh, what they do, what kind of data they generate, how is it secure, uh, basically cataloging it or creating an inventory of it and a description of the data set, it becomes a bit more easier for these. Um, systems to interoperate, it becomes easier for you to run reports on, it becomes easier for you to govern that data, to understand what needs to be kept, what needs to be archived, what needs to be destroyed, um, who's changed the data, and, and so on and so forth. Now, why do we need um, enterprise data governance? Um, and I'll let you read the, the slide here, uh, and even in the recording, but really um, just to highlight a couple of 
things and probably one of the one of the ones that it's most um, uh, important is around compliance uh, violation violations of regulations and standards um, especially around unprotected data or even going to the level of inac inaccurate regulatory reporting uh, as well as um, incorrect or poor quality of the data drives bad decision making which ultimately drives to customer dissatisfaction or even worse um, uh, company reputation in the marketplace when we look at the reason um, for data governance and as it's specific to protecting personal uh, personally identifiable information or PII um, I think we're all familiar with the GDPR the general data protection regulation one of the very first PII related um, uh, the regulations that showed up in the world governs the whole EU. Um, it is very important that a lot of the companies implement that, especially when they have uh, uh, they operate businesses in EU locations um, or um, they have customers from those EU locations. Now, ever since then, we also have PIPEDA, which uh, is a Canadian based um, um, uh, regulation, and then the uh, California uh, Consumer Privacy Act. Um, which was, I, I think, released just under or just over a year ago or just under like around a, a one year um, uh, kind of uh, a time frame. And again, it highlights the fact that um, governments are getting um, more and more pressures from consumers and our customers to basically drive down the um, uh, uh, to to mean uh, to maintain uh, proper um data governance around the information they gather on their employees as well as on their customers so it becomes very important and relevant now just to give you a just a quick high level idea of what that overall flow at microsoft looks like uh, from a gdpr a gdpr perspective uh, we have to implement that because we have large operations and customers in in the eu um, it is definitely um, having all of the data governance policies in place, data taxonomy, identifying who needs access to what data for what reason. There isn't just an open data source or open book where I can go to as an employee and say, show me all of the information on company ABC. Um, show me all of the contacts that we have, all of the sales opportunities, show me all of the support cases they have, and so on and so forth. There's a very much data governance where I have to provide reasons for doing that. It gets analyzed and then um, get access to the, um, uh, to the data uh, as appropriate. Uh, I'll skip through some of these uh, slides. And Brian, sorry, I'm, I'm not able to look at the, um, at the chat. If there is anything uh, that comes up, please uh, um, uh, interrupt me and, uh, uh, and let me know. Now, on, on to the next topic, the requirements for governing data in a modern enterprise. When you, you look at what's, what are those requirements, again, they're listed on here, uh, but you're looking at people, processes, policies, policy enforcement, but then also technology becomes very important because there's a bunch of components that need to bring this hybrid world together with multi-cloud services and the on-premises environments or the data centers and all of the edge systems together to um, generate a very solid data governance uh, model. And typically when we look at um, the, the data and when it's, where it's generated from at an enterprise level, um, there's a need for a common vocabulary um, in terms of the data definition, the data quality, privacy, access security, what Rob talked about in, in, in coupled definitely with, with identity and then uh, data retention and lineage. And the enterprise data governance goes across anything that has data or works with data or has the potential of either providing or storing data. Uh, just to be clear, that's the uh, the governance model that you want to go after. And typically, the from a technology or an enterprise data governance perspective, you're looking at a solution or a concept where you're able to crawl 
all the data stores that exist in these uh, five, uh, five areas that, or sorry, yeah, five areas that are listed on the slide. So Edge Devices, Data Center, Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud, and then create a data catalog that describes the data that's there, not collects the data that's there. It's basically a definition of the schema. So what do you need to know? Um, to govern and manage data across um, your um, uh, uh, distributed data landscape, um, who is responsible for doing the work, uh, how good or bad is the quality of the data, obviously uh, some cleanup is required, um, uh, how do you classify data, PII, or anything that's trade secret or um, something that's very uh, specific intellectual property to the organization, all of these become very, very important um, for um, uh, when you look at what you need to govern. Um, and just to give you an idea, um, a lot of organizations will create a data classification schema that basically describes the uh, data confidentiality, so you, uh, that's the table on the left-hand side, um, and that's just an example of it. Um, and then retention classification schema. Sometimes they go hand in hand, but most often in organizations, those two are separate uh, functions or sit in separate uh, uh, groups from, from that point of view. Uh, and then the roles and responsibilities for accountability, um, it is basically almost across the organization. You have your governance risk and compliance manager, you have a chief data officer, chief compliance officer, anyone from a legal perspective, because they're the ones who uh, have to deal with any legal cases that are, uh, are um, uh, created <laughs> against any kind of breaches, but they also have to deal with providing that data typically to external uh, legal uh, companies uh, who they hire to go through the court proceedings and so on and so forth. And obviously, last but not least, um, uh, IT. What data governance processes do you need in place? Um, the data quality problems, how do you identify them and remediate them? Again, just highlighting a couple of them in here. How do you classify data to know how to govern it? Um, the definition and maintenance of these common business vocabularies uh, that exist across all of the uh, data estates. Now, jumping into the data governance framework, and I'm, I'm only going to have a couple of slides here. The, um, the top area there uh, that shows data governance, vision and strategy, people, process, policies, and technology, that's really, those are really the components of the governance framework. The middle piece um, that shows data lifecycle is really what you need to think about when you look at the life cycle of data in an organization, whether it's structured or unstructured. So the data gets created. Typically, when you create it, you need to protect it. You need to understand what kind of data get, got created, how, um, how sensitive it is, um, um, how many people need access to it, and so on and so forth. You store it, you use it again, access permissions and that common vocabulary need to be uh, understood. How do you maintain it? So how do you maintain clean data? Um, and then obviously, how do you archive it and destroy it? Keeping data um, or too much data is as risky as keeping um, not enough data uh, when it comes to regulations uh, specifically, but also some of the standards. And again, when you look, whenever you look at the data governance framework, it goes across the edge. So again, those are the devices, including Internet of Things devices, data center, and the multiple clouds that an organization um, uh, consumes. Uh, and this is just um, a list of kind of identifying the components of the data uh, governance. Now, when you look at the technology needed for an end-to-end -end data governance, um, and, and think about the, the task at hand, right? Think about how much data is generated within an enterprise, whether you look at a small enterprise or go to the level of, um, you know, um, a Canadian bank or uh, even um, uh, manufacturing companies, uh, that generate a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, parts or equipment that that sold all over the world. There's definitely um, a lot of systems or solutions that will rely on that data that's generated 
Uh, so from a, um, uh, from a technology perspective in the data discovery side, there's a business glossary and a catalog that's required. How do you look at data sharing, both internal as well as external, uh, uh, what data needs to be shared and how is it protected? Uh, then from an, uh, an engineering and subject matter expertise perspective, how do you assess the data quality and uh, cleanse it or clean it? Um, and the master data management, uh, which is very important in a lot of organizations and probably one of the most, um, I, I would say, embedded in, in all of organizations is an HR system. Uh, typically, when you look at an HR system and you look at all of the systems that will require some kind of identity generated from a new employee record or a departed employee record, um, that's typically the, the one that you'll find in the most scenarios where that's the master record for all of your employee records or uh, contractors and vendors and how it feeds into all of those. And when you look on the right hand side of the slide where we have um, analytics, uh, BI, machine learning, artificial intelligence, security incident, the event uh, management systems, all of those uh, solutions expect a data set that's very well understood by them. It's not, um, most of the time you'll find um, a lot of solutions have the ability to integrate with between vendors, but it also requires a proper description of the data that they receive from the various um, uh, systems. And then last but not least, when you look at managing master data, um, the discovery, the curation, the storage, um, and then the maintenance of it, it's very important to, um, to the data governance framework. So, for example, when you look at the governance of, um, uh, sorry, the maintenance of a, of a master data, um, you have a master data uh, definition. And again, don't think about this as the records, like an ERP record or a CRM record or a supply chain management record, whatever that could be, a, a, a customer, a part, uh, a manufacturing line, whatever that is, is fed into the master data. No, that ma master data really has a description of what those systems schema looks like. So it can actually be consumed properly um, by the systems downstream and understood and maintained and, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so that's the um, uh, kind of the, um, uh, the, the, the concept behind master uh, uh, data management or MDM. Uh, and I hate using that uh, acronym because it, it stands for so many things. <laughs> um, but um, the, the master data management is where it's very important. Now, when you look at GDPR and you apply that privacy um, layer on top of the master data, really what that brings into play is the customer consent and the customer consent tables um, that have um, an additional implication on the regulation, especially if you have to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to adhere to it. So in conclusion, um, a lot of expectation in the new world, especially from executives around artificial intelligence and business intelligence, um, uh, in, in, in terms of um, aggregating data, providing all kinds of reporting that requires a very strong data, um, uh, uh, data management framework. Um, it makes it harder to find and govern, especially when you're looking at the, um, uh, the, the larger domain, if you don't have a proper uh, data management system uh, in place. Um, and then really um, the data governance enables uh, companies to uh, create trusted reusable data that can, that can be used in analysis and provide things like process improvement efficiencies um, and shorten time to that 